in this video, we're going to talk about how we can set up uh, some equations based off of these word problems. So check out number one here. It says you got 331 students went on a field trip. Six buses were filled and seven students traveled in cars. How many students were in each bus? So you can come back in and start to think about how you can set this up here. So let's see, we got six buses, and that's going to be what we're looking for. How many students are in each bus? So you can say six times. I'm going to use n for the number of students. It doesn't matter what letter you use. Um, as we've talked about this before, you can use any letter you want. Uh, so six times the amount of students in each bus plus the seven students that were in the car. And all that should give you the total on the field trip, which was 331. So that's an equation set up for this particular problem. When it comes to solving this here, think about the uh, steps we've talked about. Focus on the side with the variable. Work with the seven first. Opposite of adding seven and subtracting seven. So the one side of the equation goes to the other. This cancels here. Remember, you may see me circle it sometimes in my notes. So this cancels. 6n comes down. That equals 324. And now to finish this off, you will divide both sides by 6. This side will multiply by 6. You can go to this side, go to this side here. So you see the final answer here is going to be 10. So this cancels over here. Equals 54 when you divide 324 by 6. So the final answer is 54. Checking out this next one here. Let's see. She got to spend twenty-four dollars and seven pencils. After buying them, she had ten bucks. So how many did each pencil cost? So let's see. You bought seven pencils. You're trying to find how much each pencil cost. So you use seven times the amount for each pencil. I'm going to use two for pencils. Plus, see, after buying them, she had ten bucks left. So plus that ten bucks, she started to spend. And all that was the total she started with, which was twenty-four bucks. So that's an equation you can use to set up and solve for this particular problem. Now from here you can go ahead and start the solving process. Focus on the side with the variable. Let's work with the 10 first. Opposite of adding 10 and subtracting 10. Do it to one side of the equation. Do it to the other side. Here bring down that 7p. This cancels here. Bring down the equals. We're left with 14 here. And then finish it off by doing the opposite of multiplying by 7, which is dividing by 7. So here you're left with 2 for that final answer. Therefore, two bucks for each pencil. Uh, these next two problems here, and when I've done with students in the past, they really kind of give them uh, uh, a fit when it comes to setting them up. So uh, let's talk about it first in terms of what it's asking and, and think about how we can solve it. So it says, uh, let's see, the three, the sum of three consecutive numbers is 72. Consecutive means uh, the numbers are in a row. What is the smallest of these numbers? So let's think about, uh, and, and so they always call me every next semester, and I'm having trouble setting up this uh, equation. And so what I'll do with them, I'll say, okay, when it's talking about consecutive numbers, I'm going to put on the back of this paper here. Let's say that, uh, I'm going to pick just a couple of random consecutive numbers. Let's say you have two, three, and four, something like that. Okay, those are three consecutive numbers. I don't know all three in a row. Let's say that n represents the number two. What could you do to n to get the number three, my students would say, okay, you can just take whatever n is and add one to it to get the three. So therefore, if the n was two, you could say two plus one to get the three. Then I say, all right, y'all, what can y'all do the n to get the four? They say, well, if n is two, you could do two plus two to get the four. So I say, okay, so if you have three consecutive numbers, and the first one's n, the next one would be n plus one, and then one after that would be n plus two. If I had another one, it'd be n plus three, and so forth. So you can use that when it comes to setting up this equation. So use the n plus n plus 1, and you may see me write it like this, and say, hey, that's one number there, n plus, and then n plus 2. And like I said, you may see me do it like this, because that's representing one number. So there's our first number, our second number, our third number. And it says the sum, if I put addition times and everything, is going to be 72, so equal 72. Now, when we start to simplify expressions here, in other words, combine like terms, you really don't need the parentheses. You didn't have to put those in anyways, to be honest with you. So you can do n plus n plus n, which is 3n. And then 1 plus 2 is 3. And now we got something that looks a little bit nicer to solve. Focus on the side with the variable. Opposite of adding 3, subtracting 3. Go to one side, go to the other side. Bring down the 3n. This cancels here. It equals. And then you use 69 when you subtract here. And to finish this off, the opposite of multiplying by 3, which is dividing by 3. Go to one side, go to the other side. So it says our final answer here is going to be 23. Now, notice it says what is the smallest of these numbers. That's why 23 is our answer. If it had said what was the second one of these numbers, you'd have to say you know, 23 plus 1 would be 24 or something like that. But it's saying what's the smallest of these numbers, therefore, just your 
final answer is what you get. This one over here, you set the same way, but it says sum of three consecutive even numbers. So what I did in the past is I said, okay, we call, instead of having two, three, four, if it's the sum of three consecutive even numbers, let's say you have two, four, and six. And if n was two, what would you do to n to get to four? And they'd tell me you would add two. I'd say, correct. I said, what about to get from n to six? And they'd say, you'd add four. So this will be what we use. That was our first setup. This will be what we use for this setup here. We come back over here. We'll do n, that's our first number, plus n plus two, plus n plus four. And the sum of all this has to equal 48. So a similar setup to what we had for the first one over here, except these were three consecutive numbers. That's why we just used the one and two here. These are three consecutive even numbers. That's why we did the two and the four. So from here we go back in and start to solve it. And just like we combine like terms over here, we'll do that again. We'll do three n plus six. And that's going to equal 48. Keep solving it over here. So do minus six minus six. Get three n equals 42. And then finish it off by doing the opposite of multiplying by 3, which is dividing by 3. So the one side is the other side. And it gives me 14 for this answer. Notice it says what's the smallest of these numbers in the end. So for whatever you get for n, you get your final answer. Now, I want to pull this paper up a little bit and let you take a second and pause the video. Read through these uh, four word problems here and see if you can set up an equation for these and solve them. All right, let's see how you did here. I'm going to put in the answer key. I've got a couple ways to solve these over here. We'll talk about them in a second. Okay, so for number five, it says you bought a magazine for five bucks and four erasers. You spent a total of $25. How much did each eraser cost? I used E for eraser cost. You bought four of those, so four times how much each eraser cost, plus the $5 you spent for the magazine, and all of that should have been a total of $25. So from here, once you do the steps, subtract 5 and divide by 4, 5 should have been your final answer on that side. Number 6 is one that, um, other than number 3 and number 4, number 6 is always the one that gave people a lot of fits when it came to setting it up. Um, it's not the happiest problem because it talks about this person having a fire and her box is being destroyed, so a little bit of a grim problem there, but uh, nonetheless, we'll still go ahead and solve it. It says she bought 7 boxes. A week later, half the boxes were destroyed in the fire. There, uh, there are now only 22 boxes left. So how many did she start with? So there's two different ways I've seen people set this up. This one obviously looks like a much easier way to solve it. Um, this one over here is basically says, okay, you had, uh, you're trying to figure out how many boxes did she start with. And over here it says, uh, let's see, she bought seven boxes. So she started with a, a certain amount of boxes. She bought seven, in other words, she added seven to that. It said half of them were stored in the fire. She would take this total here and cut it in half. In other words, multiply it by half. The other way to write that would be uh, dividing by 2. Multiplying by half and dividing by 2 are the same thing. So this is a little bit easier. If you're reading the word problem and actually writing the numbers that are saying, when they say half, you write it like this. But when I show the students this way to work it out, most of them want to do this to get around using fractions. So if you use fractions, it's fine. Um, this way is a little bit easier way to solve. It says once all this happens, there's only 22 boxes left. That's why I set both of them up equal to 22. Now this way I, I showed you is with distributed property. So like 1 half times b is 1 half b. Half of 7 is 3.5, or 3 and 5 tenths. And I started to keep, uh, keep the solving process going by subtracting 3 and 5 tenths and then dividing by half to get 37. I'm going to focus more on this one because I think y'all are probably more uh, likely to want to use this strategy over here. So if you write it like this, you do the opposite dividing by 2, which is times 2. You do it to both sides. You bring down the b plus 7. You don't have to keep them in parentheses anymore. This will give you 44. And you subtract 7 to get 37 there. So uh, there's two ways you can do it, but a much easier path here to get to your answer. Uh, this one down here, let's see, you had the uh, 40 bouncy balls, uh, and let's see, you gave two to each of her friends, she only has eight remaining, so how many friends does she have? So she gave two to each of her friends, we're trying to figure out how many friends she has, so two times the amount of friends she has, plus the eight she had remaining, gave her a total of what she started with, which was 40. So that could be your equation here. When you solve it, you subtract eight on both sides, and then divide by two to get your final answer of 16 friends. And then finally over here, uh, number eight. Let's see, she spent half her weekly allowance playing mini golf. And to earn more money, her parents let her wash the car for four bucks. So what is her weekly allowance if she ended with $12? Uh, 
So when he came to solve this problem here, she spent half her weekly allowance, the so one half times the amount of allowance she did, or her allowance divided by two, either way. And then she wanted more money, so she uh, washed the car for four bucks, so plus some of the four bucks, each one of these setups was fine. And it says at the end she ended up with an allowance of 12 bucks, uh, or some, I'm sorry, at the end she ended up with 12 bucks, it was a weekly allowance, so 12 is what we have for our final piece here. So either way you solve this, you see you get your answer 16. Once again, I've got the steps for you for both ways. I, I think most of you would rather do it this way. Um, keeps you out of using fractions because over here wants you to subtract four on both sides. I rewrote this as a divided by two horizontally. We talked about this in the past on other videos. You can keep it as a over two if you want. And then just do times two times two on both sides to get that answer 16. But two different ways you can work there. So hopefully this kind of helps you with uh, some steps on how to solve word problems. I know it's a tough piece, but um, just hang in there. I'm sure you'll conquer. All right, see you.